JFT just fair and direct. Welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week May the 2nd until May, until May the 6th. I am Harlan Bospisuros, Head of Research here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the economic agenda becomes a bit heavier uh, this week compared to last week, as there are three major central banks uh, scheduled to announce their monetary policy decisions. Those are the Fed, the Bank of England, and the RBA, will, with all of them expected to lift rates. Now, on the data front, the most important releases may be the New Zealand, the US, and the Canadian employment reports. But uh, let's take things uh, from the beginning. Today, uh, on Monday today, the Chinese and UK markets uh, stayed closed in celebration of uh, the Labor Day holiday, with China expected to stay closed until Wednesday. Now, in terms of economic data, Monday's agenda appears relatively light. We get the final manufacturing PMIs for April from the Eurozone in the US, and as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their, pre their preliminary estimates. The only release that could attract some attention may be the USSI SM Manufacturing Index uh, for the same month, for April, which is expected to have inched up to 57.6 from 57.1, uh, confirming that the US economy is, is in, a much, uh, in a much better state or shape, let's say, than its major counterparts, something that adds credence to expectations over aggressive tightening by the Fed. Now on Tuesday during the Asian session, the RBA meets to decide on its own monetary policy. The consensus is for a 0.25 basis, uh, it's, uh, excuse me, is for interest rates to rise from uh, 0.10 to 0.25%, something also confirmed by the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve. Thus, with that in mind, the rate hike by itself to 0.25% is unlikely to prove very supportive for the Aussie. If officials indeed uh, push the lift of um, Baton, the attention is uh, likely to quickly turn to the accompanying statement for clues and hints over the bank's uh, future course of action. According to the aforementioned yield curve, market participants um, uh, expect uh, rates to hit 2.5% uh, by, by the end of the year, but up until now, the RB it's, itself has not conf confirmed such uh, aggressive expectations. Thus, putting, um, putting such, uh, put, excuse me, such, uh, put, excuse me, putting such a pricing at rest could result in a slide in the Australian currency. For the Aussie to gain in the aftermath of the decision, the bank's uh, language may have to support the aforementioned market pricing, something we see as uh, unlikely. One of the reasons we say that is because Australia is an exported, uh, export-oriented nation and it may not want uh, risking hurting its exports by fueling a strong uh, near-term uptrend in, uh, in the Aussie. Now, apart from uh, Chinese markets, uh, Japan will also stay closed on Tuesday due to the Constitution Day. As for the rest of the day, the only data worth mentioning are the German unemployment rate for April, the UK's final manufacturer manufacturing PMI for the same month, and the US jolts job openings uh, for March. 
Now, on Wednesday, Chinese and Japanese markets will stay closed, but the Asian calendar is not empty. We do have uh, New Zealand's employment report for the first quarter and Australia's retail sales for March. In New Zealand, the unemployment rate is expected to have stayed unchanged at 3.2%. And the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has continued uh, to add jobs at the same slow pace as in the fourth quarter of last year. The labor cost index, though, is expected to have risen further to 3.1% year over year from 2.8%, which could add to speculation of, of further acceleration in inflation and thereby revive some speculation over more rate hikes by the RBNZ. Remember uh, that uh, at its latest gathering, the RBNZ lifted rates by 50 basis points, but it hinted that it hiked more now, so it can uh, slow down uh, later. So. Uh, an accelerated, uh, acceleration in the labor cost index could revive some speculation of, let's say, a somewhat faster rate path by the RBNZ and thereby support some of the, the Kiwi. Now, as for Australia's retail sales, the forecast points to a slowdown to 0.5% month over month from 1.8%. Now, later in the day, the spotlight is likely to fall to the FOMC interest rate decision. The financial community is widely anticipating a 50 basis points rate hike and thus, if this is the case, the attention is likely to quickly turn to the accompanying statement and the press conference uh, by Fed Chair Powell for new information about the future uh, rate path. Now, hawkish remarks by several Fed officials, including Fed Chair Powell, have prompted investors to, to fully price in a double hike for this meeting as well as a triple one in June. They even anticipate another 50 basis points to be added in July with a 15% chance for a back-to-back -back triple hike. That's over like hoggish in my opinion and thus the meeting statement, the accompanying statement, uh, excuse me, the meeting statement and the, and the press conference uh, have uh, to match uh, those expectations for the US dollar to continue uh, gaining. Anything suggesting that the financial community is too aggressive may result in a decent setback. However, having said all that, even if we get that decent uh, setback, as long as the Fed is expected to continue tightening at a faster pace than other major central banks, the US dollar is very is very likely to rebound again and maintain its and continue, let's say, its uh, prevailing. Uh, uptrend. Now, as for the rest of Wednesday's events, from the Eurozone, we get the final services and composite PMIs for April, as well as uh, the retail sales uh, for March. From the US, we have the ADP employment report for the private sector and for the month of April, the services and composite market PMIs, as well as the ISM non manufacturing index. This is for April as well. Again, all the market PMIs are expected to confirm their initial estimates, so uh, focus is likely to be more on the ISM index, where uh, similarly to the manufacturing index, if we get uh, an increase, this uh, will be another positive indication with regards to the performance of the US economy. Now on Thursday, Japanese markets will stay closed due to the Children's Day, with the first release uh, during the European morning being Switzerland's CPI for April. The year-over-year -year rate is forecast to rise somewhat to 2.6 from 2.4%, but compared to other major economies, this is still very low, although it is above the SNB's uh, target of uh, 2%. In any case, uh, with uh, the SMB pledged to maintain its uh, ultra loose um, policy and even intervene in the FX market um, in case the Swiss franc uh, strengthens, strengthens further, we don't believe that this data will uh, tempt uh, SMB policymakers to alter their course with regards or their, or their thoughts with regards to monetary policy. Now, the main event of the day uh, comes a bit later and it is the Bank of England decision. This will be a super Thursday in, uh, for the UK in terms of monetary policy, as besides the decision, the statement and the meeting minutes, we also get the quarterly inflation report 
and the press conference by Governor Andrew Bailey. At its latest meeting, the bank decided to lift rates by another 25 basis points, as it was widely expected. However, what came as a surprise was the 7 to 1 vote, voting, excuse me, with the dissenter calling for no increase at all. Remember that at the February gathering, officials, uh, officials lifted rates by 25 basis points as well, but the vote was 5 to 4 with the four descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. So compared to that, uh, the March decision suggests a more cautious approach. Now, the consensus for this gathering uh, is for another 25 basis points liftoff. But this time, market participants see the case for two officials descending and favoring uh, standing pat. So expectations are for a hike, but for uh, and even more cautious voting. So if this is the case, the market reaction is likely to come from the statement, the minutes, and especially the inflation report. Updated inflation and growth forecast, as well as rate path projections, could well signal whether investors' expectations are reasonable or not. According to the forward uh, curve of the overnight index uh, swaps, Investors see interest rates climbing to near 2.25% by year end. So, anything more hoggish or just confirming that could support the pound while the opposite may be true. In case the banks, the bank's projections are indeed more cautious. Now, bearing in mind the relatively cautious stance of the bank uh, that the bank adopted last time, and also uh, the expectations around two descenders this time. We believe that uh, the latter is more likely, that the bank is likely to be a bit more cautious than previously, and thus the pound is likely to come under some selling interest. Now, finally, on Friday, investors are likely to turn their gaze to the employment reports for April from the US and Canada. Getting the ball rolling with the US, non farm payrolls are expected to have slowed somewhat to 380,000 from 431,000. But the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 3.5% from 3.6%. Average hourly earnings are forecast to have increased at the same monthly pace as in March, but this will result in a down tick to, uh, in the year over year, in the year over year rate to 5.5% from 5.6%. Now, conditional upon the Fed hiking by 50 basis points on Wednesday and staying in course for more sizable increments, we do see the case for such numbers to add more credence to that view, despite the slowdown in payrolls and wages. After all, wages are expected to be at 5.5%, which is still uh, well above um, uh, the Fed's inflation target of 2%. So it adds to, to the case of some further acceleration in inflation. Now, uh, so, all this uh, could, I repeat, could add to expectations of uh, aggressive tightening uh, by the Fed. In other words, conditional upon the US dollar maintaining its uptrend on Wednesday after the Fed and decision, we expect it to stay in that course after the employment report as well. Now, flying to Canada, the unemployment rate is forecast to slide to 5 to 5.2%. Uh, from 5.3 percent, and the net change in and the, and the net change in employment to slow somewhat to 57.5 from 72.5. Uh, but in our view, this still points to a decent report. At its uh, latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to hike uh, rates by 50 basis points, uh, noting that interest rates will need to rise further. Governor Macleod specifically said we need higher rates and the economy can handle them, adding that they are prepared to move as forcefully as needed to get inflation on target. So uh, the Bank of Canada is within the group of the major central banks that are hiking rates and also in the group of those banks that are expected to proceed with aggressive hikes, not like the RBNZ, which hiked hiked rates by 50 basis points, but signaled that it did that in order to be able to slow down later. They specifically said that they are uh, prepared to move as forcefully as needed. So they are 
very, very hoggish. The only central bank that's more hoggish than them up until now, uh, and it will be seen on Wednesday, is uh, the Fed. So with that in mind, and also taking into account that inflation accelerated by much, by much more than expected in March, we believe that this employment report could add more support to the Canadian dollar, especially against currencies, the central banks of which are expected to stay dovish or proceed uh, with a much more cautious, in a much more cautious manner than uh, the Bank of Canada in normalizing their policy. However, as we already said, due to the aggressive expectations surrounding the Fed, we don't expect the Looney to outperform the US dollar, even if uh, the numbers come out um, uh, decent. We believe that there is still some more upside for the USD cut pair. And I repeat that all this is conditional upon the Fed confirming the overlay hawkish expectations of the market. Now, as for the rest of uh, Friday's events, during the Asian session, we get the Tokyo CPIs for April, while during the European trading, the UK construction PMI for April is due to be released. Neither uh, release is uh, decisive or, uh, or major market mover. And so, uh doesn't make any uh doesn't make much sense to um, uh, to mention the uh, the forecasts so that's it uh from me thank you very much for watching and listening i hope you have a great week and i'm looking forward to seeing you here again next monday if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis you can find me on our youtube channel from tuesday to friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So, goodbye, have a nice day, and uh, better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.